Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. We invite you to join us at 1 Oakley Avenue in North Providence, Rhode Island. This podcast is presented to you by The Way Ministries, supported by listeners like you. For donations, live videos, podcasts, and more, please visit www.thewayministriesri.org. Thank you and have a great day. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Through the Bible in a Year with Pastor John. So glad you could join me today to get a portion of God's Word. Today we're going to begin in day 139, May 18th, Job chapters 8 to 10. Bildad and Job, first debate. Overview. Eliphaz has based his arguments on a cause and effect view of sin and suffering. Now, Bildad the Shuhite arises to argue the same case but from the perspective of tradition rather than experience. He calls on Job to meditate upon the attribute of God's justice as seen repeatedly in history. God shows his salvation and mercy to the upright, but brings down the wicked. Therefore, there can only be one conclusion regarding Job's plight. He is guilty of some secret sin. But Job maintains his own innocence and expresses his bewilderment as he struggles to understand his suffering. Chapter 8, God is just. Bildad's comments. Chapter 9, I know God is just. Job's concession. Chapter 10, why then do I suffer? Job's confusion. Insight. Job on trial. Job 9.3. Chapters 9 and 10 are filled with the terminology of a courtroom a theme that continues throughout the book. See how many legal terms you can find. Court, innocent, guilty, plea, judge, etc. In these two chapters. Insight. A friend and a judge. Job 9.33 The word translated mediator in Job 9.33 does not merely mean a judge who decides what is right. This person meditates between or reconciles two parties by bringing them together and negotiating between them as a mutual friend. Job chapter 8. Bildad's first response to Job. Then Bildad the Shuhite replied to Job, How long will you go on like this? You sound like a blustering wind. Does God twist justice? Does the Almighty twist what is right? Your children must have sinned against him, so their punishment was well deserved. But if you pray to God and seek the favor of the Almighty, and if you are pure and live with integrity, he will surely rise up and restore your happy home. And though you started with little, you will end with much. Just ask the previous generation. Pay attention to the experience of our ancestors. For we were born but yesterday and know nothing. Our days on earth are as fleeting as a shadow. But those who came before us will teach you. They will teach you the wisdom of old. Can papyrus reeds grow tall without a marsh? Can marsh grass flourish without water? While they are still flowering, not ready to be cut, they begin to wither more quickly than grass. The same happens to all who forget God. The hopes of the godless evaporate. Their confidence hangs by a thread. They are leaning on a spider's web. They cling to their home for security, but it won't last. They try to hold it tight, but it will not endure. The godless seem like a lush plant growing in the sunshine, its branches spreading across the garden. Its roots grow down to a pile of stones. It takes hold on a bed of rocks. But when it is uprooted, it is as though it never existed. That's the end of its life and others spring up from the earth to replace it. But look, God will not reject a person of integrity, nor will he lend a hand to the wicked. He will once again fill your mouth with laughter and your lips with shouts of joy. Those who hate you will be clothed with shame, and the home of the wicked will be destroyed. Job chapter 9 Job's third speech, a response to Bildad. Then Job spoke again. Yes, I know 
All this is true in principle. But how can a person be declared innocent in God's sight? If someone wanted to take God to court, would it be possible to answer him even once in a thousand times? For God is so wise and so mighty, who has ever challenged him successfully? Without warning, he moves the mountains, overturning them in his anger. He shakes the earth from its place, and its foundations tremble. If he commands it, the sun won't rise, and the stars won't shine. He alone has spread out the heavens and marches on the waves of the sea. He made all the stars, the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the southern sky. He does great things too marvelous to understand. He performs countless miracles. Yet when he comes near, I cannot see him. When he moves by, I do not see him go. If he snatches someone in death, who can stop him? Who dares to ask, what are you doing? And God does not restrain his anger. Even the monsters of the sea are crushed beneath his feet. So who am I that I should try to answer God? Or even reason with him? Even if I were right, I would have no defense. I could only plead for mercy. And even if I summoned him and he responded, I'm not sure he would listen to me. For he attacks me with the storm and repeatedly moves me without cause. He will not let me catch my breath, but fills me instead with bitter sorrows. If it's a question of strength, he is the strong one. If it's a matter of justice, who dares to summon him to court? Though I am innocent, my own mouth would pronounce me guilty. Though I am blameless, it would prove me wicked. I am innocent, but it makes no difference to me. I despise my life. Innocent or wicked, it's all the same to God. That's why I say he destroys both the blameless and the wicked. When a plague sweeps through, he laughs at the death of the innocent. The whole earth is in the hands of the wicked, and God blinds the eyes of the judges. If he's not the one who does it, who is? My life passes more swiftly than a runner. It flees away without a glimpse of happiness. It disappears like a swift papyrus boat, like an eagle swooping down on its prey. If I decided to forget my complaints, to put away my sad face and be cheerful, I would still dread all the pain, for I know you will not find me innocent, O oh God. Whatever happens, I will be found guilty. So what's the use of trying? Even if I were to wash myself with soap and clean my hands with lye, you would plunge me into a muddy ditch, and my own filthy clothing would hate me. God is not a mortal like me, so I cannot argue with him or take him to trial. If only there were a mediator between us, someone who could bring us together. The mediator could make God stop beating me, and I would no longer live in terror of his punishment. Then I could speak to him without fear, but I cannot do that in my own strength. Job chapter 10 Job frames his plea to God. I am disgusted with my life. Let me complain freely. My bitter soul must complain. I will say to God, don't simply condemn me. Tell me the charge you are bringing against me. What do you gain by oppressing me? Why do you reject me, the work of your own hands, while smiling on the schemes of the wicked? Are your eyes like those of a human? Do you see things only as people see them? Is your lifetime only as long as ours? Is your life so short that you must quickly probe for my guilt and search for my sins? Although you know I am not guilty, no one can rescue me from your hands. You formed me with your hands. You made me. Yet now you completely destroy me. Remember that you made me from dust. Will you turn me back to dust so soon? You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You clothed me with skin and flesh, and you knit my bones and sinews together. You gave me life and showed me your unfailing love. My life was preserved by your care. Yet your real motive, your true intent, was to watch me. And if I sinned, you would not forgive my guilt. If I am guilty, too bad for me. And even if I'm innocent, I can't hold my head high because I am filled with shame and misery. And if I hold my head high, you hunt me like a lion and display your awesome power against me. Again and again you witness against me. 
you pour out your growing anger on me and bring fresh armies against me. Why then did you deliver me from my mother's womb? Why didn't you let me die at birth? It would be as though I had never existed, going directly from the womb to the grave. I have only a few days left, so leave me alone, that I may have a moment of comfort. Before I leave, never to return, for the land of darkness and utter gloom. It is a land as dark as midnight, a land of gloom and confusion, where even the light is dark as midnight. My Daily Walk the need for someone who can reconcile a holy God and sinful humanity is as old as the early chapters of Genesis. The sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, Genesis 3-6, interrupted their fellowship with God, brought forth God's anger and judgment, and placed a barrier between God and humanity. Later, prophets would represent God to the people, and priests would establish God's order on earth for humanity. Yet throughout the Old Testament, there was never one who could fully heal the breach. To do that would require a man to be God and God to become a man. Job lived during a period of history when a perfect and sinless mediator was unknown. The one who alone can bring God and humanity together and restore that lost fellowship is Jesus Christ. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 Do you know Jesus as your personal savior and mediator before God? He is waiting to bring you to God and to settle the sin problem that has estranged you from him. Will you let him? The best of saints have borne the worst of sufferings. So true. That's all for today, my friends. Have a great day and God bless. And keep up the good work. And I will see you tomorrow. Lord willing, peace.